We're at the National Drive Electric Week events. I said that much smoother this time. That's hard to say. In Fort Worth, Texas. We're in North Fort Worth outside the Tanger Outlets Mall for Fort Worth's or North Texas uh, National Drive Electric Week's event that is hosted by the North Texas Council of City Governments. I think that's what it says. North Central Texas Council of Governments. That's the host of, of this event. And so we have Elsa out here on display. Uh, we're promoing the channel a little bit with uh, links to our road trip videos, etc. cetera. Um, but we've got a lot of different EVs out here. I'm gonna show you what's going on at the event and uh, see if we can't talk to some people and actually get good sound on them this year. So first off, let's just kind of walk around and see what, video, what, uh, what other cars we've got out here. Model S, we've got another Bolt Bias, Mercedes, EV6. Cadillac Lyric looks great. Rivian R1S's. There's supposed to be some R1T's out here, but they didn't show. Here's where all the Fords are. Got some Lightnings, Mach-E's. And here's the public service. Guy has the uh, Washington Philadelphia football game on, plugged in to his Lightning. Here's the display from Autobahn, which is a German car dealership here in Fort Worth, and they've got the Mini Cooper SE, Volkswagen ID.4, a BMW iX, and a Porsche Taycan all out here on display. And two of them are plugged in. Display from Volta with their Polestar. It's another Polestar, and here's a Volvo from Autobahn. Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm Vicki with Pedigo Fort Worth. Hi. And we are so excited to be here at the National Drive Electric Week festivities. Uh, we brought our Pedigo electric bikes for test rides. For example, this is the Pedigo Boomerang. Look at the low step through on this. You barely have to lift your leg to get on this bike. Hardly at all. It's great for people with uh, knee problems, back problems, anything like that. That's both of me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, whatever you have. We have yeah. an answer, we have a solution. The fat tire bikes people love. You can let the tire pressure down instead of going around a rock, just go right over it. And then you're, it, it just handles off road or just really bad roads? Um, you know, my daughter rides this in the city. It's just with the tire pressure down, it's kind of a squishy uh, suspension type ride. Oh, and this is my bike. This is the Platinum Interceptor. So this is your personal? Yes, it is. This one will go 76 miles on a charge. I've got lighted pedals. I've got turn signals in my battery. You get turn signals back here. And the battery pack is here under the luggage rack. Yes, it's right here. I don't have it turned on, but yes. So nice bright light, front suspension, now, 76 miles. How do these, how do they work? Um, they've got a battery. They've got a motor. They've got the motor in the hub, which is great. Uh, a lot of the mid-drive bikes pull the chain to make it work. With the motor in the hub, you can throttle these bikes and not even use the chain if you have to. So five levels of pedal assist and a throttle. Five-year warranty, over 200 Pedco stores around the country. It's a thing where you come, ride them, touch them, feel them. Have fun. So now your signs say that the, the rent me, but you, yes. you sell these. We sell them. We rent them. We do tours. We do this tour of Fort Worth. We go uh, from downtown to the stockyards to watch the cattle drive and eat barbecue. And people from all over the world have come with us. It's just a great way to see Fort Worth. It would be nice to ride in one of these around the stockyards or anything like that. What I, where I get really envious about wanting an e-bike like this is when we go camping out at a Texas state park and we see people just cruising around. I'm like, oh, that looks like it would be nice. And you can ride <laughs> all day and never break a sweat. Yeah. Except for today when it's a little warm. Today is very warm. <laughs> today is very, very warm. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Tell me, tell me about this one here. So this is like, First true commercial electric lawnmower. Okay. Uh, we guarantee you two hours runtime per battery. Very heavy duty. And it does look like a battle bot. I will <laughs> fully say that. So commercial like landscapers yeah. and cool. Exactly. Nice. So this is uh, multi-unit. So this is for apartment complexes. Cool. So we started last year. We're a relatively new engineering team. Um, we basically design, build, and race solar-powered vehicles. And by solar power, I mean completely solar power. So while a lot of people have like external batteries, 
like the, many of the battery charging stations you see here, we're not allowed to use any of those. Entire, it's all charged by just solar power. So no matter what, this car is just gonna be on the sun. It has no right yeah. reserve tank or nothing. Yeah, so technically, theoretically, this car could just run forever, but there is the battery component, right? Like the longer we run it, the more, the hotter the battery gets. And at a certain point, the battery can catch fire. So that's where like a lot of our strategy comes around is like making sure we can run as efficient as long as possible without damaging the internal component. So the race then becomes a distance race. Is yes, that sir. correct? Yeah. So um, many of the other collegiate racing teams focus on like speed, but like, as you can see from our design alone, a lot of the concepts that we focus on is the longevity of the race. So we do three different races. The first one is um, FSGP, and that's a lap kind of race style. If you've seen Coda, Circuit of the Americas, yep. it's basically kind of like that. Um, we do a bunch of laps, whoever gets the most amount of laps. They, so they grade us on the most amount of laps. They grade us on like how fast our laps are and the efficiency. And depending on how well we do within that, we qualify for ASC. ASC is a cross, um, not a cross country race, but it can range about like a thousand to about 15,000 miles. And it used to, or it used to start into uh, Topeka, Kansas. We're hoping we can get the race moved this year to Dallas. So at least the moms and dads can come by, see the car that like- That you guys all spend all your time on. Absolutely. That the students have been working so hard on. But- um, What kind of drag coefficient are you looking at with this? If I remember, well, I'm the business director. I'll try my best to remember <laughs> it. About 0.14 or 0.16 which is very normal for cars like these. Um, so this was a donated chassis from Illinois. So we kind of got, we had to kind of modify based on this style that we were given. But we're obviously looking at like the next year is um, trying to bring down, bring down that drag coefficient as much as possible. Nice. Um, actually going off a little bit more on that. So there's a high school team right next to us. So we both work on different timelines. The high school team has a year to both design and build their car, but we, only, we have two years. And that's because a lot of our regulations are very, very strict safety-wise. Um, so we have a lot of, t so as in last year, the entirety of the ra the entirety of our design promotion was just like helping design the aero shell, making modifications, making sure that the aero shell was up to regs, making sure like specific mechanical components were up to regs. And then now it's about manufacturing. So as you see, as you can see, it kind of looks like a boat right now, but we're working on like manufacturing the wheels, um, the suspension system, the braking all the driver control system, everything is gonna go into that car. Starting the next like two, three weeks, we're hoping to get this car rolling by December and tested by February. All right. Well, thank you very much, sir. Of course, yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. So this is the Canoe Lifestyle Vehicle, correct? Yes, yes. And who is this mainly targe targeted for? So our main uh, market for these vehicles, uh, we have a, an ability to tailor the solutions to whatever the user are. So these cars are built to order. So if, let's say, for example, you have different clients, you have families, we have a uh, baby uh, carriage system to where you have two baby seats back there as well. Um, it really is dependent on what the user's needs are. So if it's, a, if it's an industrial aspect, we have the delivery vehicle, it's for fleet buyers that's on the same chassis platform. Uh, you could set it up as a limo style, you could set it up as a, as a daily driver. It's whatever uh, the user needs. And it's kind of set up limo style right now, right? Currently, yes. Okay. Yeah. And what's the range you said was like 215? It's about 215 plus or minus, you know, depending on conditions. Very nice. And these are made in? Oklahoma City. And so, we have a battery plant in prior. So complete, this batteries in, uh, are in Oklahoma, cars assembled in Oklahoma. It's an Oklahoma van. Yes. Cool, cool. Well, thank you very much, yeah, sir. Yeah, of course. Thank <laughs> you, sir. So this is the conference room aspect of the canoe uh, sitting in the back. This is actually kind of kind of comfy. You can kind of see where we're at, and they've got, uh, turn the camera around. Uh, these seats here pull out on the side. The backs of the front seats pull down, so you can sit on them, and everybody can just kind of sit around and talk. Uh, I could imagine this being a camper. This is an electric bobtail, 100% EV. C electric is the electric power side so the city of Dallas behind me is uh, getting ready to incorporate some Chevy Bolts and uh, looks like Ford Escape hybrids uh, into their fleet for things that the city does. They're just not fully incorporated yet and they're just showing them, but they're back there. North Texas Electric Vehicle Association, we've been around now for about, I think, 15 or 18 years. We were actually around before there were electric cars to drive. Uh, my first electric car was Conversion, and that's how I met these guys. I went to one of their meetings, and I had a uh, 1999 Volkswagen Golf that I converted to electricity. And at the time, I would say, uh, when I first started going to the club, that was around 2007, we probably had about 
five or six converted mm -hmm. cars, you know, mm -hmm. standard electric cars. And um, so we're just a proponent of education about electric cars, about alternative fuels of all kinds. I mean, we are in favor of electric bikes, we're in favor of hydrogen, hybrid, whatever, you know, floats your boat kind of thing. There you go. <laughs> but that's what we've been around for. And so, how often does the uh, association meet up? We meet up monthly. Uh, we have monthly meetings. We meet over at um, I Drive. I Drive One Electric Cars, or I Drive One. It's a dealership that they actually specialize in uh, reselling electric autom automobiles. They had a, a display up at last year's event. I remember yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they've been a great uh, supporter. I mean, we, they allow us to come there, and, they, and it's great because every time we go there, he has such a great selection of cars. I mean, the first Rivians we saw. The first Lucids we saw were in, in his lot, the uh, Mach E. He had a Mach E before, before, he, anybody, else before anybody else had one. And uh, it was the same thing with the Rivion. We saw Rivion, that was one of the first ones that even was on the road. Nice. So he has um, uh, a good selection of cars. So it makes it a good place to meet because if you have questions about cars, they're right there and you can see them, you know, just about every flavor, so. Nice to nice. And uh, we, uh, we have three uh, EVs in our family. We've got oh, yeah. our Bolt. Uh, our Fiat 500e and a Harley Livewire. All right, you have a Livewire. That's that's. I mean, how's the Livewire been? It's fun. Yeah, it's super fun. I was going to bring it up here to show, but it's. Well, over I know. So the the hundred the, uh, the, the Harley dealership. Uh, Harley dealers actually here showing right. one. And now, did you build this thing? I did build this. We had a display board before that uh, showcased how an electric car worked, but it was a little awkward and heavy, and so I wanted to modernize it. And this is the modern version. Cool. So I can give you a quick little rundown. Sure. Cool. A peek under the hood. So of course our new cyber truck, and what you can lift it up, and then shows you the basic components. You have a high voltage battery, a controller, and a charger, <laughs> and a motor. That's pretty much what every electric car has. You can do plug it in to show charging, and when we plug it in, we got some LEDs that show up down there that let you know the battery's charging. Yeah. And then after you unplug the battery. <laughs> We've got a shifter, you can shift into forward, or you can shift into reverse, and that's pretty much how electric cars work. They're that simple. And you 3D printed this. Yep, every just about every part is 3D printed. <laughs> I didn't print the wire. <laughs> right. But, but yeah, I did. I found uh, online there was a few different, um, this was a um, RC car. But I kind of brought it back down to its components and customized it a little bit. I just got rid of the steering components. And then this was a one-tenth scale of a Cybertruck that I printed also. You could do it yourself if you only have about 40 hours. Yeah. <laughs> I was talking to um, the Texas Solar Energy Society, N-T-R-E-G dot org. This is uh, apparently a nonprofit since it's a dot org, and they are just around for education and um, informational purposes. They're one of the only places here that isn't a business of any kind. So that's pretty cool. They gave me some handouts. They have information about what to do if you're thinking about getting solar panels. Um, and there's also on the other side, like questions to ask. If you have a solar salesperson come to your house, you can, these are questions you can ask them. Uh, wait, did I do that? Hmm. I think I might have done oh, there, that. There, there's the question yeah. to questions ask. Questions right to there. ask a solar energy salesperson. So, so these are all real important. Obviously, a lot of people are like doing door-to-door -door things now. So anyway, this is pretty neat. So I talked to the guys. There's a lot of fun stuff going on. Um, the one guy has a house that has not only solar panels, but it has like rain collection and it has a um, geothermal, like heating and cooling. And there's a um, there's a, a tour. Uh, there's a tour, byram.net, where they're, they're doing like tours of, of solar houses and his house is on the tour. So I think it's next weekend actually, we'll look into it. Anyway, I signed up for their little email. They've got a whole online community thing going on. Um, it's just neat, it's just people that are interested in solar energy and um, related things. So I had a good time talking to them, it was fun. Well, let's see, they're, they're walking around with the announcement that they're getting ready to do the raffle for the stamp cards, which we didn't get one. Apparently they had these like bingo cards oh. that you walk around and have people at the booths sign off on them. And one of them said, talk to an EV owner. And so I did sign off on one with somebody. Had some folks talk to us about the Bolt. We, all, we tagged going in around talking to some folks while we were here today. 
Why didn't we get this the punch card? Did we, we get here too we early? We got here too early. Aww. And so that's why when we got here, they had us park in a spot where they wanted to put all the bolts. And then as it was time for the event to actually start, they asked us to move so we'd be closer in with the other cars. Let me show you where we're at. We're, we're kind of uh, in with a Tesla and another bolt. There's a Tesla behind us. There was a Chevy Volt there, but they left already. Uh, and just on the other side of that uh, Model S is where all the Fords are. Uh, got bunches of Mach-E's and Lightnings and such. And there is a Rivian R1T that finally showed up but uh, it couldn't park by the other Rivians. Yeah. So it was hot today. It was. It's October 1st, you guys, and we didn't think it was going to be quite this hot, but it is still, what, did you see it's, what the temperature was? Well, right now I'm was? getting 90 degrees is, is what my watch says, but I it feels that way. I think it was hotter than that before. Because there's, there's more humidity uh, mm -hmm. than we had expected. And last year we were at Dallas City Hall and there were all these big trees, and now there were, we're in a wide open concrete parking lot at an outlet mall. The trees are little. And so uh, we got to put up our canopy, which we haven't set up before today. Uh, but hey, it's a nice one. It's that, a nice that canopy. That is that, I'll show you. See, see our canopy is a nice canopy. Yay. Um, and, and, we're very, and we're very fortunate to have it because it would, would have been brutal out here in the sun for this long. Yeah, agree. Having the shade is good. And a lot of people came out to talk to Fiona. Fiona's been out here today too, and she's been enjoying herself. And well, we're rambling, aren't we? Well, she she barked at a lot of things. She barked at other dogs. She docked, barked at certain people, which it's hard to tell. And she barked at the drone. You guys have seen her when there is a drone nearby. She Actually, gets I don't think I've ever put that excited. up on the channel. But yeah, mm -hmm. she, she, she gets very excited at the drone. She wants to uh, eat it. Uh, she and, does. Yeah. Oh, Fort Worth's got a code compliant Chevy Volt over there, too. Anyway, but that's been our experience at the National Drive Electric Week event in 2023 out here in very, very north uh, Fort Worth, Texas. We're like across the highway from Texas Motor Speedway right mm -hmm. now. Um, but uh, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll get another video out to you soon. Alrighty.